In this video, we'll learn how to find the shortest distance between two skew lines. It's a beautiful concept that uses everything that we have learned so far in this chapter. So let's begin. The first challenge for us is to visualize what skew lines are. So skew lines are not parallel lines. They're also not intersecting lines. In 3D space, you can have lines that are neither parallel nor intersecting. Now let's practice visualizing skew lines. Imagine a line on this screen. So this is line one. This line is lying on the screen. It's a 2D screen. This plane has this line. Now imagine a different line that's not on the screen. Now I know you can see this on the screen, but try imagining that this is not on the screen. This is line two. This line actually cuts the screen at this point. So it cuts the screen here. This part is in front of the screen and this part is behind the screen. So this line is coming into the screen. It cuts at this point and then it moves behind the screen. So this is line two. Now think about these two lines. These two lines will never intersect because this line stays in this plane and this line only touches this plane, only cuts this plane at this point. So this means they're not intersecting. They're also not parallel. This line is moving from here to here in this direction, whereas this line is going in some other direction. So they're neither parallel nor intersecting. These two are called skew lines. All right. Now the next part is to figure out what's the shortest distance between these two lines. So if you've visualized these two lines correctly, you can see that this distance is the shortest path between these two lines. Any two points that you join, one on this line and the other on this line, that line segment will be longer than this one. This is the shortest path. This shortest path is perpendicular to both of these lines. It's perpendicular to this one, and it's also perpendicular to this line. So this is our shortest path. Now our job in this video is to figure out the length of this shortest path using whatever we have learned so far in this chapter. So let's do that. Let's do it together. Let's take any two points on these lines. Let's take a point here and a point here. So we have two points, one on line one and the other one on line two. Let's just join these two points. Clearly, this is not the shortest path. This is some line segment that we created by joining any two points. All right. Now what we're going to do next will involve some naming. So let's name these points. This is a one vector. This is a two vector the position vector of these two points. Let's say that line one is parallel to a vector B1. So line one is parallel to B1 vector and line two is parallel to B2 vector. All right. If line one and line two are parallel to B1 and B2 vector, this means that this shortest path, this has to be perpendicular to both B1 and B2. This means that it's parallel to B1 cross B2. So this will be parallel to B1 cross B2. Let's call it C vector. So B1 cross B2 vector is C vector. This shortest path is going to be parallel to C vector. All right. Now this is where the magic is. We'll take the projection of this blue line over this purple line. So we'll take the projection of this vector over this vector. So this length is going to give us the shortest path. We know how to take projections. All we need are these vectors. So what's this vector? That's A1 minus A2 vector. So we need a projection of a1 vector minus a2 vector over this purple length. And we can take a unit vector along this purple length. Let's call it C cap because C vector is B1 cross B2. C cap is going to be a unit vector along B1 cross B2. So the shortest distance between these two skew lines is going to be the projection of this vector over a unit vector that's along this vector. So the distance is the mod of the dot product of these two things. One is a1 minus a2. Now let's bring b1 and b2 into the picture. This c cap, that's equal to this vector divided by its magnitude. That's how we calculate the unit vector. So we can write this as d equals to a1 minus a2. We're taking the dot of it with c cap. That's b1 vector cross b2 vector divided by its magnitude. That's mod of b1 vector cross b2 vector. So this gives us the distance, the shortest distance between these two lines. This line one passes through a1 vector and is parallel to b1 vector. This line two passes through a2 vector and is parallel to b2 vector. So the equations are line one is r vector equals to a1 vector plus lambda b1 vector. And line two is r vector equals to a2 vector plus lambda b2 vector. So if we know the lines in their vector form, we can figure out the distance. 
by using a1, a2, b1 and b2 in this formula. We know the distance in the vector form is this. Let's figure out the distance in the Cartesian form. If line 1 is this and line 2 is this, can we figure out a1 vector, a2 vector, b1 vector and b2 vector from these? Yes, we can. a1 vector is the point through which line 1 passes. That's x1 i cap plus y1 j cap plus z1 k cap. Similarly, a2 vector is x2 i cap plus y2 j cap plus z2 k cap. And can we figure out the vectors that are parallel to these lines? Yes, b1 vector is a1 i cap plus b1 j cap plus c1 k cap and b2 vector is a2 i cap plus b2 j cap plus c2 k cap. So we have these four vectors. Now let's use the formula. We want a1 minus a2. So let's figure that out. a1 minus a2 is x1 minus x2 i cap plus y1 minus y2 j cap plus z1 minus z2 k cap. Then we need b1 cross b2. So let's take the cross product b1 cross b2. That's equal to the determinant of i j k a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2. Let's expand this. This is going to be i times b1 c2 minus b2 c1 minus j times a1 c2 minus a2 c1 plus k times a1 b2 minus a2 b1. So that's our cross product. We also need the magnitude. So let's take the magnitude of b1 cross b2. That's going to be square root of this square plus this square plus this square. So we have the denominator ready as well. What else do we need? We need the dot product. So let's take the dot product of this cross product and this difference. So this is going to be the dot product of b1 cross b2 and a1 minus a2. So that's going to be, let's look at the components, x1 minus x2 times b1 c2 minus b2 c1 plus y1 minus y2 times this plus z1 minus z2 times this. So the dot product will look like this. And if you look closely, b1 cross b2 and this dot product look very similar. Here we have i cap, here we have x2 minus x1, here we have j cap, here we have y2 minus y1, and here we have k cap, and here we have z2 minus z1. So we can also write this lengthy thing in terms of determinants. Instead of i, j, k, we can write x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, and z2 minus z1. So this long thing, this long expression becomes this determinant, a1, b1, c1, a2, b2, c2, and instead of i, j, k, we have x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, and z2 minus z1. And now we can piece everything together. This distance in Cartesian form, that's going to be, this comes in the numerator, and this, the magnitude of b1 cross b2, this comes in the denominator. And this is the formula for the distance between two skew lines in the Cartesian form. Now, I personally prefer this one. If I see equations in Cartesian form, I convert them in vector form and apply this. This one is more intuitive. I take the difference of a1 and a2, and I take the dot product with the unit vector along b1 cross b2.